Just to, just to give you an, a taste of how important this healthy functioning soil is, um, because it relates directly to human health. Uh, and, and we can touch on that later. The, um, just uh, most of the modern contemporary diseases you could put back to destruction of the soil, etc., and the loss of nutrient integrity and density in the modern foods because of it. The, the, the key factor, I guess the key difference between a regenerative agriculture approach, by that, by regenerative or ecological agriculture or agroecology, I, I mean an agriculture that renews those landscape functions. It's actually, a, I hate the word sustainable, it means marking time and just holding where you were, whereas regenerative really means a going forward approach. And um, I guess going back to university, I, I, the book, by the way, came out of a, a late age PhD. I was in my late 50s when I went back because I'd started to encounter through my um, Merino ram selling business because we were doing different things there and the early adopters were also those that were doing some of the new uh, ecological agriculture things. Um, it was on visiting upwards of a couple of hundred clients across every state and travelling about 70,000 k's a year to do it. Not only did I see what was happening to our landscapes, but a lot of these um, clients that were early adopters in sort of different genetics and fibre were, were also the new adopters in agriculture. And so I, that really intrigued me because I'd already started to adopt myself, not as quickly as them. So I went back to uni to ask the question, what made them transform? And the, the short answer is in 60% of their cases, like Colin Sice, it was a major life shock that, cat, that cracked the carapace of their mind. Um, marriage breakdown, bushfire, big drought of the 80s, etc. Uh, I was a slow learner, I had some of those, but it took me a while. <laughs> um, and um, now I've lost the train where we were, I was headed. Oh, yes. So going back to uni after nearly 40 years, I had a lot of catching up to do because I hadn't followed some of the ecological work and I think one of the biggest ideas to come out in the last two, three decades and probably you could put in the last hundred years really and, and this idea has come out of, of a lot of the new thinking in systems that came out of computer work and then some of the, the way out physics stuff looking at chaos theory and stuff is the capacity of natural but also man-made systems like the World Wide Web to self-organise themselves. So when disturbed, say you think about a natural system, left to themselves, nature has this capacity to work to get back to a state of resilience or health, and it's called self-organisation. And um, it was while travelling around talking to farmers, uh, uh, the leading regenerative farmers, a lot of them kept saying, look, my job is to get out of the way of Mother Nature. And I, I thought about that over a couple of years and I realised intuitively they were saying my, my role is to enable nature to get on with self-organising its systems and uh, without them necessarily understanding systems, complex systems and complex adaptive systems which can go from your, your local paddock or your backyard veggie garden right up to the earth systems which are self-organising and that's what we're disturbing now. So um, that, that's sort of the broad background I think to um, uh, and the final part of the book, I'm sort of trying to explain some of those, those issues behind those sort of things and, and linking. But anyway, I, that's a preamble. I was going to try and give you a concrete example of this healthy soil thing that Tammy was asking. Just give you one example. The difference between a self-organising, healthy, biologically active soil, which is the basis to regenerative agriculture, one of the key bases. The difference between that and uh, an industrial soil, so to speak, is that biological activity. And if you can imagine a cubic metre of soil, um, one of the key players other than uh, um, thousands of varieties of bacteria are, are the root fungus called mycorrhizal fungi. Your average mushroom, mushrooms in a paddock are some of their fruiting spores. And in, in a healthy soil that's fully active, um, the, the, the fungus, their reward for going out and hunting the nutrients is the sugars off the root tips of the plant. So there's a partnership there, a mutual partnership. And in, in this healthy cubic metre, there, there's up to, and the, the fungus have these very thin microscopic tubes that go out during the hunting. In this healthy cubic metre of soil, there could be up to 40 kilometres or more of those tubes working. And they're pulling in the nutrients. 
uh, and, and which the animals then eat or which we eat. And so you then start spraying that with chemical and industrial fertiliser, which is full of all sorts of overload. The Australian soils aren't like European soils. Um, they're not loaded with phosphorus, etc. So the huge volumes that you find in industrial fertilisers are like a poison. That's, that's without heavy metals attached and, and the poison. So the, um, you're killing off the soil bugs. And so no one's working to put all those 90 odd nutrients that we know exist since the Big Bang that live in our soils. Nothing's working to put most of them back into the food. So that's why, um, we can probably touch on a glyphosate roundup later, but that's why um, the correlation between the takeoff of, of uh, heavy industrial ag from the 80s and 90s, particularly with chemical agriculture and the modern diseases that parallel it, that, that's a key factor that uh, we've co-evolved for a million years or so in the savannas of Africa to we're hardwired to detect nutrients and if they're not there and, and these detectors are in our gut, in our organs, our alimentary canal, they're shrieking if, if the, uh, they're telling the brain that they're still hungry and um, so the converse is if you're living on um, junk food down at a, a capital MC or somewhere your body is telling you you're still hungry because you're not getting the nutrients, so you're eating too much. And it's, it's, it's one of the factors in obesity, which is more complex than that. But, so a healthy, biologically alive soil is just fundamental.